Hi, I'm Cecilia Yates. Welcome to our video introducing massage and the use of aromatherapy oils. Did you know the use of aromatic oils was documented more than 6,000 years ago? The Indians used essential oils for medicinal purposes and the Egyptians had the same idea. Queen Cleopatra used essential oils in her beauty treatments. They used essential oils to embalm the pharaohs before they put them in the pyramids. Hippocrates, the father of medicine, said if one wishes to enjoy a healthy life, one should bathe in aromatic waters and have massages with scented oils daily. Sounds good to me. The use of aromatic oils with massage has been around for a very long time and today it's enjoying a resurgence in popularity and this is why we're bringing you this introductory video. So I hope you enjoy it. Essential oils are extracted from aromatic plants, trees and grasses. Due to their complex nature, it is important to use only the purest essential oils. Essential oils are not greasy at all. They have the consistency of water or alcohol. They can be very potent and most cannot be applied directly onto the skin. So during massage, the essential oils must be blended with a suitable cold pressed oil, such as apricot, avocado or almond. These are called carrier or base oils and won't override the fragrance of your essential oil. To expand on the use of essential oils and massage is our aromatherapist and masseuse of over 10 years experience, Francesca Witherby. We have a wonderful selection of oils. The question is how do you blend them? Well this is the fun part of aromatherapy is choosing and blending your own oils. Mm -hmm. I like to work with two or three oils at the most and that way it's not confusing to have mm -hmm. too many different fragrances going on at one time. So the best way to do your blending is first of all smell each individual oil by just wafting it past your nose. Look at the name, this way you can start to memorise what the oils smell like. Secondary is to choose two oils that smell compatible together. When you find a combination that smells good to you, then you can start to blend them in the glass bowl or metal bowl. How much of your carrier oil should you use and how much of your essential oil? I like to use a proportion of one tablespoon of oil, which is approximately 15 mils of the base oil, with seven six or seven drops of your essential oil, which is approximately one drop of essential oil to every two mils of oil, base oil. What are the different kinds of carrier oils? Well, there are lots of different carrier oils to use, but the key thing is to use a cold pressed natural oil. Just measure out one tablespoon, which is 15 mils, of your base oil, and pour it into a glass or metal dish. Next, count carefully the number of drops. Three drops of bergamot to four drops of cedar wood. Cedar wood is a nice centering and fortifying oil. It's very good for the skin. Mm -hmm. Bergamot is a mood harmonizer. If you're feeling agitated, it calms you. If you're feeling depressed, it gives you a lift. So these are two nice general oils to start your massage with. If you have any left over, how do you store the oil? The best way to store your massage oil is in a dark glass container with a screw top lid. Mm -hmm. This can be stored in a cool, dark place, such as your bathroom cabinet. Base oils last for up to six months. The idea with massaging is not to use too much oil because if you smother the person with oil, you're wasting these precious essential oils. At the end of the massage, the oil should be well rubbed into the skin. They shouldn't have an oily look. So it's better to use a small amount of oil at a time. Francesca, many of our viewers won't have a professional set up at home, so how do you suggest one should prepare the room for a massage? It's very easy to prepare the room for a massage in your home using what you have. I like to ideally use the lounge room or the bedroom where you've got a carpeted space. I don't use it, uh, the bed because it's a bit too soft and it's hard to get around the person that you're massaging. Later on I'll be demonstrating on my professional table, but for you people at home I'd suggest that you get a doona and fold it twice over or a nice thick blanket to provide a pad for the person to rest on. Then you place a large sheet over the doona to protect the carpet from the massage oil. 
covering that with a bath sheet and we place two pillows for the person to lean on. Thank you. One for the legs and one for the chest. And then we roll up a towel to rest their foreheads on so they can relax and breathe easily. There's a little space for them to breathe there. And lastly, we finish off with a tissue. I think that looks very comfortable. How should the person receiving the massage get ready? Well, I think it's best to have a nice warm bath or shower before the massage. Preferably have the massage after exercise as well so you get that extra relaxation. We're going to show you how to prepare an aromatic bath in a moment. So after the bath, wearing cotton briefs, wrap yourself up in either a bathrobe or some towels and you'll be ready for your massage. To create a wonderful fragrant aroma throughout your home, pour water into the bowl on the burner. Add a few drops of your favourite essential oil and warm this with a lit candle. An aromatic bath is one of life's great pleasures. After you've run your bath, add five to eight drops of pure essential oil with a little milk. Agitate the water to disperse the oil. Don't add the oil as the taps are running because a lot of the fragrance will have been lost before you've even entered the bath. So to prepare for the massage, just take a deep breath in and stretch up and relax, making sure that you're feeling comfortable as well because if you feel good, you're going to make other people feel good. Check that your clothes aren't too tight because restrictive clothing will make it hard for you to move around. And make sure that you've removed any jewellery, um, watches. Make sure that your nails are tidy as well. You don't want any sharp nails catching on people's skin. Uh, also take your shoes off as well so that that way you're feeling centred and relaxed. This is Brenton, our massage partner for the back section. Just relaxing please Brenton, resting your arms by your sides. It's great to have plenty of towels when you're giving a massage to make sure that your massage partner is comfortable and warm. Okay. Is the back the best place to start a massage? Yes, I always like to start around the back because often people do suffer from back pain and even people that don't have back pain often feel tension around their neck and shoulders. Massage around the back is great for relaxing people when they have headaches and people feel comfortable being touched around this area too. How much oil should you use to start the massage? Start by pouring a little bit of oil into the palm of your hand. Try not to use too much oil because you'll find you'll be sliding around too much. Rub the oil well into your hands to warm it up. Then just rest your hands on the top of your partner's shoulders. Ask them to take a deep breath in, please, Brenton. And breathing out. Now that you've centred with your partner, you can start sliding down the body, spreading the oil generally over the whole back. Are there different kinds of strokes you can use in a massage? Yes, there are different strokes. There are three key strokes that we use in Swedish massage. The first one is effleurage, which is what I'm using to apply the oil and to spread it throughout the body. Effleurage is great for relaxing the surface muscles and getting your massage partner used to the feeling of you touching their bodies. It also helps to calm the nerves. There are different ways that you can do effleurage. But the most important thing is to mould your hand to the shape of the body as you're right running over the muscles. You can do hand over hand effleurage. And then you can do double handed effleurage for more muscular people. It's really important to learn how to work with your fingers together, which saves your hands, because otherwise after about five minutes you can get very, very tired when you're massaging. So putting one hand on top of the other just gives you that little bit more strength. The important thing is to always glide and feel the contours, feel where the tight spots are, and talk with your massage partner, ask them how they're feeling. How are they, are they feeling warm enough? Are they enjoying the massage? Does anywhere feel sore as you're working? Just talk with them. This really enhances your communication skills with your friends and family. Oh, I can feel some tension around here, Brendan. Is that a bit sore? Yeah. So you'll often find sore spots up around the top of the shoulders. And this is an area where we can go into the next keystroke, which is called kneading. When you knead the body, you grasp the muscle and squeeze it gently in your hands. It's sort of like kneading bread. Thank you. 
I'm doing thumb, alternate thumb movements here. Other variations of frictions, a finger over finger, hands together, working into those tight neck and shoulder areas. And you can also do very specific circles. It's important to ask your partner, how does the pressure feel? Is that all right? Remembering that the harder you go, the more slowly you go. Is there anything that I have to be careful of when I'm doing a massage? Yes, I think it's important to be careful not to press too hard, especially on the bony areas of the body, because there's no padding to protect them. And the spine is the most important area to be very careful about. So I suggest not to actually massage the spine itself, but just the muscles lying on each side of the spine, because then you're nice and safe. So don't press directly on those bumps that you feel along the back, which are called the spinous processes, but just work along the muscles that lie on either side. The harder that you massage, it's the slower that you go. And that way you can never hurt someone. If you feel that your partner is tensing up as you're massaging, ask them, is this sore? And if it is, ease back. Never work into pain with your partner. It should be comfortable for them and also comfortable for you. So the three main massage strokes that we're using are effleurage, followed by kneading, and then we complete the movements with circular frictions. We're working on Lisa now, specifically on the leg region. Yes, so to work on the legs, we make sure that the leg we're not massaging is well draped, that the towel is tucked into Lisa's briefs, that she's covered and warm. Next, just centering on that part of the body you're going to work on, breathing deeply and relaxing. And next, we apply the oil. So just pouring the amount that you need into the palm of your hand, rubbing the hands together and gently and firmly applying the oil in an upward movement, moulding your hands to the shape of the body, spreading the oil evenly right up the leg. Now to effleurage the leg, keeping your hands together. Where there is unity, there is strength, so fingers warm and moulding the hands to the contours of the body, using the whole palm as you press upwards with a nice firm, flowing, easy movement. How do you know how firm to actually press? Well, as you massage, you can feel the muscle softening as you work. When you feel a hard muscle, just slow your pressure down and go in a little bit more deeply. The areas to avoid doing very hard pressure are the back of the knee because it's a very sensitive area with lots of veins and nerves running through, and also the side of the hip where there's a hip bone. And remember that we talked about not pressing too hard on bony areas. Also, if people have any surface veins that you can see, please go gently and just keep to simple effleurage movements on these areas. With cellulite, does it matter what particular essential oils you use? Well, I like to use oils that stimulate circulation and also ones that eliminate fluid retention. So essential oils of cypress are wonderful for the veins. Uh, fennel and juniper are great for uh, getting rid of extra fluid which is called edema and then you've got lavender which is really good for uh, stretch marks rosemary improves circulation so there are quite a few oils to choose from the citrus oils are also very good for orange peels so things like orange and lemon fennel are all fabulous for that Alan is an athlete and as a result he has a lot of aches and pains Francesca, what essential oils can you use to relieve these? Wonderful essential oils for muscle aches and pains include rosemary, which is excellent for circulation and relieves muscular tension, and peppermint, which has wonderful refreshing qualities. How do the oils penetrate beneath the skin? The oils penetrate via the hair follicles on the skin down into the epidermis layer. From there, the circulation of the blood via the little capillaries whisks the oils to circulate through the whole body. 
so it actually helps to have hairy legs. To a certain extent, but it can also pose some problems for massage because the, oils, the hair can really irritate your hands if you don't use plenty of oil and also you can pull on the person's legs. So I'll just show you how much oil you should use for those hairy areas in the body. Often men will have hairy backs, so lots of oil there please, and the chest too because that's a sensitive area. So you probably use double the amount of oil on a hairy area than you would for a normal area. As soon as you feel that the hair's um, causing a restriction, add that little bit extra oil. So now I can get a nice flow with my effleurage and we can just repeat the movements that we did on the back of the leg for the front of the leg. And all along the front of the shin I can feel the muscle tightness here. Because of Alan's exercise, he's using his legs a lot, so I can start to really work in much more deeply around these areas, staying on the muscle, so I wouldn't do this around the knee, but just on the lower leg. When I flow up to the top of the surface, I'm just doing a gentle effleurage to join this part of the body with the thigh, but no strong pressure on the knees, please. You should see the body rolling and moving as you're working. That means the person's relaxed. If they're holding their leg tight, just gently shake the leg and ask them just to let go of any tension that you might feel. You can also do some double-handed effleurage on the top of the thigh. See how my fingers are once again moulding to the shape of the body. And I'm working nice and steadily with even pressure. It's nice to incorporate the foot in the leg massage, although we will be specialising in the foot later when we show you how to do the aromatic foot bath. So remember not to leave parts of the body out. Work on the whole leg. Bring it all together with your effleurage movements. And just stroking down along the foot. You will use the same movement on the hand when we do the neck and shoulders. Everyone loves having their neck and shoulders massaged, so that's what we're going to do. Just relax your arm by his side, thanks Alan. Are you feeling nice and warm? Yeah, yeah, Great. So we've made sure that Alan's covered with towels. Very important to only have the area exposed that you're actually working on because then your massage partner feels comfortable. Okay, so I'm going to apply the oil again. Being careful not to put too much on because I can always go back for more if I need it. And starting with the effleurage movement covering the whole shoulder right down to the hand. Okay, so now I'm going to anchor to stop his arm moving around. So just firmly holding his hand and then gliding upward. So this is a nice drainage movement. And you can start to feel the contours of the body, just remembering to really shape your hand to the area that you're working on. And the arm's a great place that you can start to be a bit creative with your movements. You've been doing a little bit of massage now, you know what to feel for, to feel for the muscles and where you can feel the tension. And so just slowing down where you feel the body's the tightest. Now I can feel a bit of tension here, so I'm just slowing that pressure down and really pressing in a little bit more deeply. The areas to avoid rubbing too hard are the back of the elbow where the bones are. Now we're just going to do some gentle kneading which is really a squeeze, squeezing and releasing movement for here. Just squeezing and releasing down the forearm to the hand. This relaxes all those arm um, muscles, especially if people are playing tennis or playing golf, they'll love this. All those typists out there, people working on the computer, this is a special area for them. They're really going to appreciate what you're doing for them. Okay, so when we get down to the hand, just a squeezing and releasing movement, just to make sure their hand's nice and relaxed. Then gliding onto the fingers and just circling them gently around. Please don't tug or pull at the fingers. This is just a nice relaxation movement. So just circling in each direction. 
This is to help your friend just to relax and let go of any tension in the hands. Okay, so we've done the arm and we're coming up to the shoulder now. So they can just relax their arm out like this. So that way the whole shoulder, you can see there's some gentle movement here. Okay, just turning your head to the side please, Alan. Okay, so now we can start to massage the top of the neck and shoulders, which is just a key area for so many people. Now this shoulder muscle here is called the trapezius and you want to get right underneath that. This is where you'll find all those knots. Can you see that there? That's a big knot I've just found. How does that feel? Okay. Oh, good. So talk to your friend and make sure that you're working on the right spots. That's not hurting you? Yes. Great. So when in doubt, remember to ask them how they're feeling. And you're going to get lots of positive feedback, I can assure you. Okay. The oils that I'm working with for the, around the neck and shoulders and arm are relaxation oils, which I think the best ones to use are lavender, which are very good for muscle aches and pains, but not as stimulating as rosemary, and sandalwood, which encourages deep breathing and relaxation. So both of these will start to relieve stress. And when you think about it, stress is what's causing most of the tension up here to begin with. Okay, so now that we've relaxed the neck and shoulders and arm, a nice way to finish off is just by flowing right down and the person feels nice and relaxed right through their arm. This is a nice way of saying goodbye to an area, the gentle stroking down and out through the fingers. Pausing for a moment and finishing. She's going to be our massage partner for facial compressing and neck and shoulder and facial aromatherapy massage. You might be wondering why I'm brushing Natalie's hair. This is a wonderful way to start giving a really nurturing, caring treatment for women. Women absolutely love having their hair brushed. It's so relaxing for them. So guys out there, just remember this. This is a lovely thing to do for your lady friends. Okay, so uh, Natalie has removed her makeup, taken away jewellery, earrings and necklaces. So now we're just going to wrap a towel carefully around her hair to protect it from any oil because there's nothing worse than having oil rubbed through your hair at the end of a massage. So now Natalie's hair is all protected. We're ready for Cecilia to prepare the warm compress. To prepare the compress, fold a hand towel like a fan. Soak this in comfortably hot water and wring out well. Compressing is wonderful to prepare the skin for the facial massage. It warms the skin, helps remove any debris after the cleansing and also opens the pores so that the skin will absorb your aromatic oils better during the facial massage. For the facial blend I've used essential oils of rose and chamomile which are beautiful for sensitive skins. They're some of the finest oils and some of the most expensive. All right, Natalie, just relaxing and closing your eyes now, please. We're going to start by applying the oil around the neck and gently sweeping it up to the forehead. Smooth, flowing strokes, making sure you've got enough oil so that your hands glide freely over their skin. Always working upward, this lifts the face and helps to prevent ageing wrinkles. And then working in sections, gliding over the cheeks and up and across the forehead. Circling around the temples, this is very relaxing and wonderful if people are suffering from headaches. You can also just gently sweep your hand across the top of the forehead. Very relaxing movement. Then just drawing your fingers along the top of the brow line, avoiding contact on the eyes. And just gently sweeping the thumbs across the cheeks. Steady, gentle movements, keeping a nice light contact. Then you can massage down and around the front of the chest, sweeping the hands across the shoulders. Just asking your partner to take a deep breath in, please, Natalie. And breathing out, and then just gently relaxing and easing those shoulders. Sweeping the hands underneath, and we can do some very nice flowing movements. Now be very careful about the front of the neck. That's a sensitive area, we don't want to press there. But working on the muscles at the back of the neck, down into the shoulders. 
You can see all that lovely movement around the upper shoulders. This is great for people that have tension knots. Then just circling with your fingertips underneath the neck up to the hairline. And to complete this, we just do a very gentle scalp massage through the towel to avoid getting oil on the hair because people don't want to end up with greasy hair at the end of their facial massage. massage is one of the easiest massages you can do but I think it's the most enjoyable. What's the oil you're going to put in that foot bath Francesca? Peppermint's a wonderfully refreshing oil so that's what I'm using today mm -hmm. especially after you've been on your feet or um, been wearing high-heeled shoes it's so mm -hmm. relaxing. Oh that's nice and warm. Right so once you've bathed your partner's foot you can actually remove the foot out of the water and place the other foot into the bowl. Making sure that you dry their leg well before applying the oil for the foot massage. That really does smell wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> okay, just placing your foot up here. And again, I've used peppermint and rosemary in the massage blend. Okay. Just applying the oil in upward strokes as we've learnt before for circulation. Okay, so just doing a few nice effleurage strokes, especially concentrating around the arch of the foot. How does that feel? Oh, wonderful. Oh, good. Okay, and then we do some ringing movements. There are lots of little bones in the foot and we really want to get in there and mobilise all those areas. Feet are pretty strong, they get stomped on all day, so you can go quite firmly with a foot massage. But if someone's feeling ticklish, just slow down the movements and just use some light squeezing strokes. Francesca, thank you. I'm in heaven. I hope you'll be able to use some of these massage techniques to put your partner in heaven and try using the essential oils to make it extra special. Have fun.